U.S. Girls, bless this mess, album review, let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from U.S. Girls, the long-running experimental indie art pop project of Miss Meg Ramey. And in these genres, Meg has truly become someone that I respect and look to for a seriously punchy gut punch of an indie pop and art pop tune. Now, Meg's music and her sound has really come full circle. I mean, look back to some of their early releases with the U.S. girl's name, like Introducing and Go Gray. These are highly experimental DIY indie pop albums, if you even want to call them that. Now, more often than not, they are very lo-fi, noise-inspired projects. Some weirdo grooves as well, but every once in a while on these projects, you caught the whiff of like a really, truly great indie pop tune. But it was the U.S. Girls on Crack album that I started looking to her as someone that I really appreciated a little bit more. While it was still definitely some weird outsider pop, it was a lot more digestible at the end of the day, and there were, seemed to be like some running themes throughout her music. To me, Meg didn't seem like some DIY artist making music out of her home. All of a sudden, she seemed like actually like a really fearless artist, and it's only gotten better since then. 2012's Gem had her of taking more risks and I thought she was getting on a real hot streak and by the time that half free rolled around I considered her to be one of my favorite artists in underground pop. Her music was groovy and free spirited, almost psychedelic oh and if that wasn't enough in 2018 she dropped arguably the pop album of the year with In a Poem Unlimited. This was an indie pop album with a mission and it would not take no for an answer. Lyrically this album is a gut punch. So much so that I was so hyped for her follow-up album, Half Light. And while initially I loved it, I honestly have lessened on it quite a bit over the years. It has promise, it has great songs, but overall, I was upset with the sheer non-amount of risks that she took here. And leading up to this album, I was super, you know, curious to see what direction it would go in, just because a couple of different singles were dropped, sounding very differently than where I'm used to hearing Meg's stuff. So let's chat about this thing. This album starts off with only Daedalus, and it is a sharp intro. I love the repeated hook. I love the strong synth grooves that we get here. It is very 80s, and it just, it sounds right. It sounds like a great sound for Meg to take on right now. It's so catchy as well, like some of Meg's best stuff is. And lyrically, she does not hold back. She starts right where she left off. She doesn't take no for an answer. This is the intro that I needed. And let it be remembered to everyone, when Meg Ramey is on, when U.S. girls are on, uh, she is a damn pop monster. Future's Bet, a couple of tracks later, excites the hell out of me. It wakes me up. It makes me get on that dance floor. I really love this track's very gritty, very gnarly guitar-driven intro. And at the end of the day, it's actually a pretty laid-back uh, track, which, I mean, it, it gets old on some of the other tracks here, but for now, Meg actually does it a lot of justice. Mostly because the passion, determination, and songwriting is all top-notch. It's got a memorable hook, it's got the mission statement, it's good. So typically now, I think it's the best track here. This is the jam that I wanted US girls to drop. It's got a slick new disco groove and a fantastic beat. The backing vocals, the hook. This is easily one of the best pop tunes I've heard in a while. When Meg is on, she is most certainly on and completely unstoppable. This is a great single. But uh, can we talk about some of these deep cuts here because some Nate Wright on this album, and I hate to say it. Like, Just Space for Light, the second this track came on, I thought it showed promise. I got hyped up. It has that cinematic vibe that I really like as well. I had high hopes. But these melodies instantly just seemed really phoned in for me. Like, I get the weird feeling that this just didn't come as easily to Meg this time around. It also just sounds by the end of the track that she's trying to do way too much. Then we have Screen Face featuring Michael Ralt. And like, God, these low energy tracks are putting me to sleep. And it's sad because at the end of the day, Meg's performance, especially lyrically, is still just as staggering. At its core, it's everything that I've loved about U.S. girls' music for years. But this goofy, sort of low-key instrumental is just not doing it for me. Then we have the title track, Bless This Mess. I mean, I've tried to really enjoy this track from its 
you know, dropping a couple of months ago. I mean, Meg's performance is absolutely impeccable. There are moments of this track that are genuinely beautiful, and lyrically, this is gorgeous. A triumph, even, but the lack of progression, the lack of a hook, the lack of any interesting instrumental here is just bringing me down. I just feel like Meg could have very easily taken the core of this track and repackaged it differently. Rest in peace, Roy G. Biv featuring Marker Sterling. Also, not cutting it for me. Like, hearing some of the great alternative dance and new disco grooves that Meg brings to the table on this album makes tracks like this stand out for all the wrong reasons. This track plods along, doesn't do anything interesting. It's, God, it's five minutes. It's just such a letdown. Like, Meg was a tour de force for so many years. And one of my favorite names because she had the mission statement. She had the lyrical punch. But she was also taking risks to balance that out and make these beautiful masterpieces. And I don't think this is it. I'm let down by this album. And that's a shame. But there's still some great material here that shouldn't be missed. Like Tux, Your Body Fills Me Boo. This track is great. This is a glitzy, groove-driven journey that it goes over six minutes. This bass groove alone. Uh, wow. Meg sounds like a presence here. This track is a damn happening. It is a journey. And not to mention, this hook will just stick with you all day. Fair warning. St. James Way is really charming, too. It's a stripped-down acoustic ballad. I love the driving riff that we get here. It's really lush. really is very colorful as well. And I feel like this track just, just really complements Meg's vocals. And, like, while I wasn't looking for, like, a real breakaway from the sort of dance-oriented tracks on this album this is a really nice switch up and pump featuring alana stewart is really nice too i love the bubbly colorful funk that we get here it's one of the more genuinely fun tracks we hear on this album and the guitar licks that pop in for the chorus are really well done it's such an easy to digest track too like i feel like this just came so easy to meg but then we have outro the letdown yes it is a letdown. I mean, Meg is such an unbelievable craftswoman when it comes to putting her message into her music. This is a very personal album if you look into the themes. And here we are with such a strong, powerful message and such a focused message with this asinine instrumental and just the repeated lyrics. Like, I just, I think Meg is do so much better than this. I've seen her do so much bigger and bolder things than this album. And it's a shame because I'm such a huge fan of what she's done over the last few years. I mean, lyrically and performance wise, you're not going to be disappointed with this album. If you've been a fan of Meg's work for years, you are going to find plenty to enjoy here. You may be let down with some of the deep cuts here. While there are some really great sort of new disco alternative dance bangers on this album, some of the low-key moments, man, will be putting you to sleep and maybe even wanting you to turn this damn thing off. And in that respect, I am let down. I'm let down by this album. And I hope that, you know, people enjoy this album more than me, but I don't know. I, I'm let down right now. I'm feeling a strong five. Yeah. But let me know what you all think down below. If you liked the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.